so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will be solving problem d that is factorial and multiple from Atwood or beginner contest 280 so let's move on to the solution but before we move on to the solution i want to tell you guys about newton school coding contest so newton school organizes coding contest every month you guys can solve some quality problems and also compete against top coders in the world this will be a good opportunity to benchmark yourself where you guys are lying in respect to other students in India or around the world. And not only that, along with this, you can also win some cash prizes. You can win rewards up to rupees 90,000. You can also win scholarships up to rupees 20,000. And along with this, there will also be some job opportunities. So this month, the contest will be on 30th of November. It will be around two and a half hours from 9 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. So do not forget to sign up. Uh, the link will be in the description. So do go and sign up from there. So in the problem, we have been given some integer k, where k can be up to 10 to the power 12. And we have been asked to find the smallest integer n such that n factorial is a multiple of k. Right. So that is the problem. Given some integer k up to 10 to the power 12, find the smallest integer n such that n factorial is a multiple of k. Now, how can we solve this? As we have been given that n factorial is a multiple of k, we can write that n factorial is equal to k into something. Right? Where something is just an integer greater than or equal to 1, right? Something is just an integer greater than or equal to 1. And as we know that, if we have some number x, it takes us k root of x time to find the prime factorization of x, right? And as my k is up to 10 the part 12, I can easily find prime factorization of k in under 10 the part 6 iterations, right? Because k root of k is up to 10 the part 6, so I can easily find prime factorization of k in 10 the part 6 iterations, which I can easily do in under 1 second, right? So here, I will find the prime factorization of k in O of square root of k time. So let's say I get something like this. Let's say I get n factorial is equal to p1 the power a1, p2 the power a2, p3 the power a3, so on up to px the power ax, right? Something like this into something. Now, what are the observations that we can draw from this equation? right so if you look at this equation carefully you can see that your n factorial must contain or you can say or you can say prime prime number p1 must occur at least a1 times when you compute n factorial right so when you are trying to compute n factorial prime factor or you can say prime number p1 must occur at least a1 times right as your n factorial is equal to p1 the power a1 into something so your prime number p1 must occur at least a1 times so how can you make sure that your prime number p1 occurs at least a1 times your prime number p1 will only occur when you multiply the multiples of p1, right? So occurrences of p1, occurrences of p1 will only come from multiples of p1, right? So we have to iterate over all the multiples of p1. We have to iterate over all the multiples of p1 until occurrences are less than a1 right because uh, because we have been told or we have observed that your prime number p1 must occur at least a1 times and your prime number p1 will only come from multiples of p1 so we will iterate over multiples of p1 until the occurrences of p1 are less than a1 right so we have something like this i have p1 2 times p1, 3 times p1, so on up to p1 square, p1 plus 1 into p1, so on up to p1 cube and so on, right? 
the first number will give me one contribution right because it only contains p1 one time this will also give me one contribution this also gives me one contribution p1 square contains p1 into p1 right so it contains p1 two times so th this will give me a contribution of two this will also give me a contribution of one p1 cubes contain p1 three times so this this will give me a contribution of three so i will keep adding these contributions until they are less than a1 right keep iterating over multiples until you can say occurrences are less than a1 right and as soon as they are greater than or equal to a1 we can break right and let's say at the end you reach some multiple answer of 1 right so basically answer of 1 is the smallest multiple of p1 where occurrences of p1 become greater than or equal to a1 right so you have to multiply all the multiples of p1 up to answer of 1 right and you can make the same argument for all the prime numbers so you can make the same argument for p2 p3 and up to px so for every prime number you will find this answer right for p1 this was some multiple answer of 1 similarly for p2 find answer of 2 for p3 find answer of 3 and so on up to px find answer of x right and our overall answer our overall answer will be the maximum of all these answers so answer of 1 answer of 2 answer of 3 so on up to answer of x right because i am computing n factorial i am computing n factorial so if my like number p1 is demanding me to multiply numbers up to answer of 1 and my number p2 is demanding me to multiply numbers of answer of 2 similarly p3 is demanding me to multi multiply numbers up to answer of 3 similarly px is demanding me to multiply numbers up to answer of x right so to satisfy all of them i will have to choose the maximum among all these answers right so i will find the maximum answer among all these answers that will be my overall answer and i will multiply all the numbers up to that answer right so my n factorial will be 1 into 2 into 3 all up to overall answer right or you can say that basically your n is equal to overall answer and this will contain all the answer 1 answer 2 answer 3 somewhere in the middle right it will it will contain all the answers somewhere in the middle right so that will ensure that your p1 will occur a1 times your p2 will occur a2 times your p3 will occur a3 times and so on right so every prime number will occur appropriate number of times so that is the entire solution and if you guys want to summarize it i will like summarize it once again so the summary is my number n factorial can be written as p1 a1 p2 a2 so on up to px ax into something this gave me the idea that my number n factorial must have occurrences of p1 at least a1 times and these occurrences must come from some multiples of p1 so i will iterate over multiples of p1 until i reach some number answer of 1 which is also a multiple of p1 such that occurrences of p1 are greater than or equal to a1 right then i will store this answer i will do the same thing for p2 and store the value answer of 2 do this for all the all the prime numbers then in the end my overall answer or you can say my value of n will be equal to maximum of all these answers so answer of 1 answer of 2 so on up to answer of x right so that is the entire solution and if you guys want to see the code for this here is the code as well so i take k as the input then this map factors will store all the factors of k so in this loop i will in square root of k time uh, find all the factors of k and store them in the map then i will iterate over all the pairs in the map and my prime will be the prime numbers that are p1 p2 p3 so on up to pn 
and my required is the contribution or occurrences so these are a1 a2 a3 so on up to not p and this is px this is up to x right then in this for loop i will iterate over all the multiples until my contribution or the occurrences reach zero right so iterate over all multiples until or iterate over all multiples of pi or you can say prime until occurrences needed reach zero occurrences or you can say here it was required reaches zero so i iterate over the multiples i find the contribution that this number will give me right so this while loop is finding contribution right because p1 square will give me uh, two contribution p1 cube will give me three contribution so every number or every multiple has different contribution so you have to find the contribution of that multiple so this while loop will do that then if my required occurrences have reached zero i can just break out right so if occurrences are complete break out then my overall answer is just maximum of this answer and the current multiple that i just found so this is basically answer overall answer is equal to maximum of overall answer plus the answer of y that i just found this that i just found for this prime number right and in the end i can just print out the overall answer so that is the entire solution and if you guys have some doubts feel free to ask in the comments or join my discord server i'll be more than happy to answer your doubts there and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye